Well, that's annoying. Well, look at that. All of my tires around 100 degrees and 139, 140 PSI, except for one. I just noticed that it was at 108 and then dropped down to 105 now. So that is my rear driver's side on the rig. So we either have a hole in the tire or the wheel is cracked. And ironically, the wheel cracked on that side on the forward wheel back in October. I was able to get that replaced under warranty. Let's see what happens this time. Well, this is the one that's having the problem. It doesn't look terribly bad. But uh, let's check it out. Handy dandy meter, let's set it to PSI. There you go. Oops. Well, there's a problem. 88.6. So, definitely it is low. Kind of confirms <clears throat> the um, the monitor said that it dropped down to about 97 uh, when I just arrived here. Let's see what this one's at just to see what's going on. And this one is at 139. The tires are still warm. We've not even been here 15 minutes. All right, so I've confirmed that's the one. I got to get set up a little bit here. And then um, I let it all cool down. <clears throat> Might be a day or two before I get to it, just because I got some other plans here. But I'll probably jack it up, take the wheel off, do an inspection of the tire, see if I can see anything obvious. Um, and then I'll spray it with some soapy water leak detector kind of stuff and see where the leak may be. If I can't find it with uh, my method, I'll bring it to a tire shop and have them submerge it and that should tell us what's going on. Last time, it was this one up front that had the problem, and they sent me out a new rim, or a new wheel, <clears throat> and that got situated and squared away. And the way I found that was I did bring it to a tire shop and they submerged it and found the crack on the wheel on the back side. It was very, it was a hairline one. All right, stay tuned. All right, so it's been a couple of days, the air is completely come out of the tire now. I put the slide in so I can get a little bit better access and what I'm going to do is follow um, Moride's recommendation because this is the independent suspension. Um, to change out a tire you can actually jack it up by the suspension. I'll show you the documentation that shows that and I'll put a link to that documentation down below so you'll have that handy if you need it um, to confirm what I'm saying. And you should always do your own research and do what you're comfortable with. This is not a recommendation to do it this way. This is just the way that I'm doing it. Um, I'm not going to use jack stands either because I already have the um, leveling jacks down. So I'm going to rely on those. Uh, plus, I'm not taking the other tires off. This thing not going to come down far at all if it were to come down. So let me show you if I can get access over here. I don't know that I will. This is pretty tough. Um, but I'm right under, maybe you can see where the bottle jack is. If not, again, like I said, I'll put a picture from the documentation of where I'm hitting it, and that should give me enough lift. We'll see. So there's the placement of the bottle jack. I guess I could have just used the leveling jacks to bring it up as well, because I did end up having to bring the leveling jacks down to reground them after lifting this. And you want to make sure you do that because if the bottle jack fails for whatever reason and the leveling jacks are up an inch or two, then the rig's going to come slamming down, get some uh, momentum and come slamming down on those, which wouldn't be good, obviously. And this also gave me an opportunity to uh, keep the, the rig level. So I raised both the left and the right side to keep it level uh, to not cause any problems with the slides and stuff like that. Not that it would, but I just figure an extra couple of seconds of precaution it's probably a good thing. All right, so now I'm going to go fill up the tire with air and see if I can find the leak. All right.
right, so I got the be all end all of leak checking stuff, you know, Dawn and a little bit of water. I'm going to hit the um, interior of the wheel first because that's where I had the crack last time. So I'll just really hit this pretty hard and see. Oh, and there we go. That was pretty easy. There is the crack right there. Well, there's no denying that. That's the problem. That's exactly the place where it happened on the last one, too. Oh, that was easy to find. Well, now I'll fill out a form on Lion's Head and get the process going. What they're gonna want is pictures of this, this, some date codes here, picture of the problem, picture of this date code here. Then they'll also want a picture of the front profile like this so they can see which wheel they're dealing with. All right, I'll go get that done, see what it's gonna to take to get the new one here. All right, you can do this one hand. Let's take a look, see what we got. Okay. Well, there you go. All brand new. And uh, no paint over spray on it. Imagine that. All right, well, should be uh, ready to go. It has a valve stem, but obviously it doesn't have the tire pressure monitoring sensor on it. So we'll get that switched over. I found a tire dealer up the road, so I'll head out to them. Um, and they're gonna charge 25 bucks to get it swapped over. And they'll get rid of the old wheel for me as well. All right. Back at it in a few. Okay, so I've got the tire mounted on the new wheel. Now it's time to put it back on. So as usual, you just uh, put it back on there, put the lug nuts on relatively snug, and then I'll lower it down, tighten them up, and then I'll torque them to 140 pounds. All right, finished. Tighten them up, torqued them to 140. Check the pressure, that's all good. We are ready to roll. All right, say what you will about the quality of the Lion's Head wheels, but their customer service is pretty good. Let me show you how easy it is to get the warranty service. So here's their website, lionsheadtireandwheel.com. I'm just gonna go over first and show you the product that we have. We have this Tiger wheel. Um, it's a 16 by six, uh, eight, lugs, six and a half inch spacing, and the load rating is 3960. All right, so you can go over here to services, go to warranty, and it tells you the line head directly manages and adjudicates all the warranty requests in house, which is fine. They have this uh, Beth Scott here, who I've emailed um, second time now, because this is the second time we've had a wheel failure, but the form is right here. Basically, it's going to tell you everything you need to do. They will do tire and warranty claims. Um, I've never done a tire claim with them. I've done the warranty claim. Gives you the information, telephone number if you need to call. But basically, what you do is you fill out the warranty claim form, claim date, whether what it is, your information about the trailer, where you're going to have the wheel shipped. Um, we don't do anything on the tire. Then you just select out the appropriate Wheel. So, for example, mine was this aluminum, the seven and a half, black, eight lugs. You put your dealer name, the contact information, your name, your contact information. And I think they want, up here, they want the VIN and a proof of purchase. So I had my sales order. I keep that handy in a PDF, sent that along. So I filled this form out on Monday morning and submitted it via email to the email address that they tell you to. I got an immediate response, auto response, saying that they received it. Later on that afternoon, I got confirmation that they honored the claim. Uh, they wanted to know where to send it because I had left the uh, shipping address blank because I didn't want to know the time it would take for them to ship it to me. Turns out they would be able to ship it the next day. 
Uh, so they shipped it on Tuesday and it arrived at my location on Thursday. And then they also ask you for an address where you want them to send a check because they give you $30 um, to reimburse you for the cost it'll take to um, move the tire from one wheel to the other. I found a local tire dealer, brought it to them. They did it for $26.50 with tax. So, you know, woo, I'm up $3.50, get a cup of coffee. All right, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the independent suspension, show you where I got the information to where to place the jack. So here is the manual for the Moride independent suspension. There it is, that's what it looks like. Down here is somewhere, let me get to it. Um, it shows you the assembly, shows you all the parts, and then it shows you two jack points. So here, site one is the uh, bottle jack placement, and then you can put a floor uh, jack placement is right here. I know that some people have used a bottle jack at this number two um, and lifted the wheel up without lifting the frame up at all because it compresses this shock. At least that's what it looks like happened. But Moride does recommend that you should always do it by the frame unless it's an emergency. You know, that's up to you how you want to handle that. I chose to use the bottle jack here because my bottle jack did not have enough reach to get to the frame and give me the lift I needed. So there is that. Also, you would notice that if you watch the video where I had the bottle jack, it was on soft ground. I didn't really like that, and I've got a link down below of how I resolved that. Um, it's kind of a mystery link, and then I also have another link down there to show you uh, how you might want to do this number um, two placement if you want to use a ball jack. So I've got two links down below for that. All right, so there is that information. Again, I'll put the links to uh, both of the sites in the description below, and hopefully that'll help you out if you get into the same situation. All right, so that video turned out to be a little longer than I expected, but I did put in a whole lot of extra information that I hope you'll find useful and helpful to you. Uh, you'll notice I mentioned that I torqued the lug nuts to 140. I did that as the rig sits. As I roll out of here in the next couple of days, I'll go a few miles, I'll stop, and I'll recheck those and retorque them to 140. And then after a few, maybe 100 miles after that, maybe a little shorter, next rest area or rest stop, I'll check them again. Yeah, just to make sure. Also, uh, when I was perusing the Lion's Head website, you may have noticed I pointed out that the wheels were rated for 3960. And I found that kind of odd because the rig originally comes with two 8K axles for 16,000 pounds. So you'd expect that the wheels would be rated each for 4,000 pounds or better. And that's got me a little bit concerned. Now I know 40 pounds isn't a big deal but I have had two failures in six months. So now I'm concerned that I'll have failures of the other two for whatever reason. But I may not be so lucky next time. These past two times I've been within distance where I can get them shipped to me quickly. It wasn't catastrophic, but what if it is next time? I've got those risks to consider. So now what I'm gonna do is make another video. I'm gonna show you the weights of my truck and show you the rationale that Ellen and I are going to use to determine if we're going to upgrade the wheels and tires to be rated over 4,000 pounds each. So if you're interested in that, hit the notification bell. And as usual, if you'd like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. And if you think anybody else will get value from this content, please share it out to them. As, also, as usual, please leave questions or comments down below, and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. Thanks very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Take care.